What's good with y'all? Rohan Rogue, so back to my channel. Baton Rouge tutorial right here. Something like Young Boy, Fredo Bang, JD Youngin, you know, rest in peace. Yeah, you know, like Young Boy announced he's gonna dropping another album soon, Black. Uh, I know y'all trying to get on that, so this little tutorial will help you guys. A little Baton Rouge sauce. Uh, dropped a kit recently, 100% free, my boy Fanero. It's on my channel, it'll be in the description, check it out. 10, 100% free Baton Rouge loops. This is a part of it. Uh, I'm gonna play the beat and we'll get into it. Alright, so this is the loop right here. I'm gonna play it. Alright, so let's break this down real quick. Uh, first thing first, we got the piano. Pretty standard in these loops. Uh, this is a MIDI by my boy Fanero. I dragged this in. Uh, I slowed down the BPM here, like, wanted, sort of, like, from, like, 170, 160-ish. I dropped it to, like, 150. I just like this range. I think it sounds cold, 150 to 160 for Baton Ridge. Obviously, you can push it to, like, 170 and shit, but... It all depends on like what you got like going on in the actual pattern itself and like what you're trying to do. But uh, pulled up Keyscape, got the hard preset and edit anything, just left it as it is. Drag this MIDI and probably like fuck around with the pitch and stuff a little bit. But uh, yeah, this is what we got. So let me play this right here. Yeah, like nothing too crazy going on there. First thing first, we gotta talk about that bass line. It's like the heart and soul of these Baton Rouge loops, so I might play that by itself. And yeah, it just repeats again. Uh, it's really just there to like offer that sort of bass and give that rhythm to the beat, like that sort of dark, mischievous vibe to it. And yeah, like just uh, mess around with it and try to create that sort of vibe. Um, not really much I can say. What I will say is leave gaps in the bass for sure. That just, just makes it more rhythmic and better. Then we come up here to the chords. And it's just some basic minor triads. This is the variation right here. This G to G sharp especially adds that sort of, that dark sort of sound to it. And yeah, just have it, you don't need to go too crazy with it. You can have it repetitive. Again, just remember to leave gaps in there. That staccato sound is pretty key to uh, these Baton Rouge loops, I feel. Especially like the more aggressive ones. Um, Alright, so this is what the chords and the bass sound like together. So yeah, just like sort of accents, uh, accents these like notes really more so than anything. Uh, just gives a body to the whole thing. Last thing is the top line. The top line is optional, you don't have to add it, but it can add more melody to your beats if you really need it. You can go simple with it or you can go crazy with it. I feel like my last Baton Rouge tutorial I had a more like complex top line. This one's pretty simple right here, which is totally fine. You can keep it simple too, you can just not have it as well. Here's what the top line sounds like by itself. And yeah, that just repeats. Again, dark and shavious vibes, just a lot of staccato in there, don't have it too rigid. And uh, yeah, I would say strum and randomize. You don't necessarily have to do it, but a lot of these Baton Rouge loops kind of sound like a little realistic and stuff, nothing too crazy, but just strum and randomize and you'll be good. For effects on that, I got the reverb. I dragged the mix down to 10% because too much reverb just fucks up that staccato vibe I was talking about, so just drop that down a little bit. Uh, then I got Sue Sue just because the hard preset and keys kept me pretty harsh, so just gotta drag that down a little bit. Uh, last thing right here, just a little uh, low cut just for the bass later. Alright, next up we got the bass right here. This is APB. Uh, it's probably my favorite bass for like very simple bass patterns like we got here. And uh, let me play this. Yeah, so again, 
just following that bass pattern that I already had, uh, keeping it really simple. Remember the staccato notes and all that, and then remember to randomize it too, just to make it sound more realistic. So, no effects on that, just moving straight on. We got this organ right here, this is out of Omnisphere. I used this in my last Baton Rouge tutorial too. Go to this church, just like a hard ass organ, it's kind of crazy, I wouldn't expect to find this in Omnisphere, but there you go. Uh, it's a really simple pattern, so I'm gonna play it. So yeah, uh, kept that pretty simple. This right here is literally just layering the notes of the piano, the top line of the piano. That's all I'm doing right there. Uh, for this part at the end, have this little organ roll like you would hear, like in in like church or something on the Alma version, but so I think you would hear. So all I did was go down the style like this, like all the way down to there, and then I selected every note. So we're on step right now, and you can make it half step by just holding all these, holding alt, and dragging it like this halfway, and you have it on the half step. So if you don't know that, it's a nice little tip for you. If you do it without holding alt, it'll just move it freeform, whereas with alt, it's like, it's on like the magnet sort of setting, so it's a little better. But yeah, right there, just have it rolling up, have the velocities sort of swell up right there. I'm doing the same thing, just downwards this time right here, and yeah, just keeping it pretty simple right there. Uh, for effects on that, some reverb and just some low cut right there. Next up is like the last real sort of element, last sort of real melodic element of the beat. It's a pizzicato string. Got this out of X-Band. It's just the big piz from the setting right here. And yeah, it's playing the simple sort of triplet pattern which sort of contrasts pretty nicely with the piano. It's kind of common in these Baton Rouge beats to have a pizzicato string and like even more so to have it on this sort of triplet bounce. But here's what it sounds like. It's just that uh, repeating again. Um, yeah, I just uh, kept that simple. For effects on that, just like the usual reverb. I got pancakes, I wasn't clashed too much with the organ or the piano, especially these parts right here, just cause that's like right when the organ plays, same sort of frequencies too. A little bit of sued, just cause uh, high piz caught up can be like annoying and then just some low cut for the bass. Next up, we we'll start to get on the one shots. Uh, shout out to Exclusive, uh, he has this uh, kind of mega pack drum kit thing and I got all these one shots in it and they're really good for Baton Rouge and for like pain and stuff like that. So check that out if you want. This right here is the church bell from it. Let me play it. So yeah, uh, Kept that simple, just have it low up here, high up here, just for some variation. Right here, I just simulated delay just because I didn't want to automate the delay, just like that. Uh, just have it sort of swelling downwards. Uh, and yeah, it's pretty simple. If you want to manually automate your delay, just do that. For effects on that, just got some reverb right there. Then we get into the synth right here. This is that Baton Rouge synth. I used this in my last tutorial too. It's out of the same drum kit, so check that out. It's just this. So I'm at, like one thing I noticed with a lot of beats, like pain beats or these Baton Rouge beats or any beats that use like phrased sort of one shots is you guys don't like put them on time. So they sound awkward, right? Like they sound weird. Um, you're gonna wanna put them on time, right? So the way to do that is you go, you double click on the uh, whatever the waveform, go audio, audio editor, go to detect beats right here and you'll have the BPM, right? So all you need to do is Control A right here, Control C, copy and paste that. Go here to the BPM, just type it in, put it in. Uh, then go right here and put it just to stretch mode. If it's on resample, put it to stretch mode. And uh, then drag, uh, drag the BPM back to whatever you want it on. And then you'll have it playing on time. So if you have a lot of like uh, waz and stuff like that that have sort of a very specific rhythmic element to them on the one shot. Please, please, please make sure you fucking time stretch them so they make sense, like, so they're playing on time, basically. Uh, a lot of you guys don't do that. And then yeah, for this sound, uh, a little bit of tangent there, but yeah, for this sound, just some reverb, like, up to just cause uh, I want it to be like a little more heavy in the background shit. Uh, and a little low cut, high cut right there just to, mold the sound, make room for the bass, and just get rid of some annoying frequencies. 
Next, uh, next one shot is this horn right here. That's just hard. I just love that horn. Sounds really good. Same drum kit. For effects on that, just some reverb right there. Basic. Some delay to just fill out the loop a little bit. Cutting out some of the highs, just some frequencies I didn't want there, and some of the lows. Last thing is the wah. It's a really common wah. It's uh, probably my favorite one to use, to be honest. It's just one of the smoothest ones. Remember to time stretch that. Like I can't, like this one you'll definitely notice if it's off. So remember to time stretch that. For effects on that, just some reverb. And yeah, like that's the, that's the loop. Uh, nothing too crazy. It's really just like four core elements and like a bunch of accents. And even those core elements, like really like the, the keys and the bass are like the main two. And then everything else is just to make it like a little less basic. You know, but yeah, moving on, we're gonna do the drums. All right, so boom, loading the drums. Let me play them real quick. So yeah, let's do these one by one. First of all, clap. Nothing to really say. Basic guys, clap. And uh, yeah, again, Chad exclusive. These are all his drums, so same kit. Next up, hi hat. Uh, you can just two step these a lot of the time. For this one, just because like it's a little slower for like a Baton Rouge beat. Just added some like sixth rolls right here, like dragged it down a little bit. Some step rolls right here, like accents. It's not even a roll really. It's just playing in time on like the eighth time. But do the roll right here, just alternating the velocities. You just gotta keep these ones simple, bro. Here's what it sounds like. simple next up snare right here uh, dead simple pattern just like a little uh, transition rollish sort of thing at the end but here's what that sounds like so yeah it just sort of comes off the clap right here just how the velocity sort of swung upwards just for that bounce and it goes well with the hat too, like this little two, two hit sort of thing right there. Next up we got the crash right here. It's again pretty simple. I have this little transition sort of uh, thing right here. If you do that, do remember to put it on cut itself just cause like crashes can be long. So you don't want them to like clash with each other too much. But here's what it sounds like. So you get that sort of crunch on the downbeat right there, the one in the five, and then like this transition right here, it's pretty common. I hear it in Baton Rouge beats, West Coast beats, like uh, Detroit beats, like all these type of beats. But uh, next up, the open hat. Really simple pattern right here, just plays right before the first clap and like right sort of after kind of. Nothing to that really, very simple. So this is a clap right here, pretty common in Baton Rouge beats. Uh, you're gonna hear like a lot of ear candy type of shit in the melodies and the drums. So this is like an example of that. Plays right before the second clap, so here's what it sounds like. So yeah, as simple as can be, just uh, change those velocities for some bounce. Next up, we got the zap, which again, very similar. Uh, plays right after the second clap. Sort of ear candy stuff you'll hear in a lot of Baton Rouge beats, and here's what this sounds like. So yeah, I just sort of change it right here for some variation. Just remember to put it on cut itself too. That's always helpful for these. And just all kind of velocities to down. Next up, just like a rim, but here's what it sounds like. So yeah, it just kind of uh, plays after that first sort of clap right there. Next up, we have the uh, 808 finally. Uh, just following those bass notes, like it's very similar to the bass pattern I laid out. Uh, I do use the envelope thing right here, like put the hold up, turn everything else down. Just have like a sort of staccato note, just because the piano has like a very staccato feel, so I feel like doing that for the 808 complements it very well. But here's what this sounds like.
And yeah, uh, they really just use uh, like a spins for most of these feats, so feel free to just use spins. Yeah, that's it for that part. Then for arrangement, um, I got that sort of crash uh, transition thing right here to go from the first part of the intro to the second part. And really all this first part is, is this, this second part of the verse without the drums, so just drag that here, play these two, and then it leads into the uh, leads into the second part of the intro, which is more like intricate. So yeah, uh, one thing that's really common in these beats and West Coast beats and Detroit beats I hear a lot, you'll have your perch playing in the intro itself. Uh, now they play kind of sporadically and randomly, just for some bounce, like just just to like throw the listener off a little bit. So you don't want you don't want like to drag the whole pattern just straight up like that. Just have them sort of like come in and out. Uh, right here you can see I only have like the first part of the club. For the zap I only have this section right here. But ram just the first right at the start. Then right at the end of the intro I do have that same crash transition. I introduced the snare sort of roll thing I had there too. For the clap I switch it up. I hear this in a lot of Baton Rouge beats. Uh, it's just it's effectively this. And it goes really well with the other elements too, so if I play that right here. And yeah, it just like hypes it up. So um, for the hook, this works really well on a lot of high BPM beats. You'll have your melody playing with the bass. You won't introduce most of your drums, including the 808, till like the second half. You'll t I'm, I'm really just playing the hats, the clap, snare, and the crash right here. And it just still building up, still building up to that second part, so. Here's what it sounds like. So yeah, like, dead simple. Um, it's just a very nice way of uh, build, building up that second part of the hook. Have that same sort of clap thing going on right here. Snare, E, crash. Cut out the hi hats right there just to show that we're like moving on. The hats keep like a sort of consistency, the consistency to the beat, and if you want to sort of pause on that, just remove the hats. It's the best way. Um, and then yeah, bring in the 808, bring in everything really except take, except the bass. And yeah, that's mostly what I got going on. Only other thing is this little filter right here. I try to remove the piano entirely from this part of the section, but it just sounds weird. Like it just sounds empty. So. I do keep the piano, but I put a filter on it, so it sort of swells up and down into the hook. So here's what it sounds like. And yeah, it comes back right there. For the love filter settings, I just got just this, so you can just take that. This is the default love filter, I just lowered the cutoff right there. And yeah, I mean, that's pretty much it for the beat. Um, check out Gangsta Fever, that's my little Baton Rouge kit with Fenero, shout out to my boy. You know, my wife's affiliate link down there, check that out too. You get 50% off in your first month, so it's no reason not to. Uh, and follow us on all our socials, and stay looped in gang, peace out.